ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rangru. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we promised you a different mod over here today. Today, we're actually we're back in Costa Trica as far as the map goes, but this is the Ostfront 1941 mod. So, Rang, what are we fighting with today? And then tell us a little more about this mod, because it's quite cool. Yeah, so we have the same players as Tuesday and left hand side in the blue. We have Sir Gensei playing the 18th Infantry, motorized. And on the right hand side in the red, we have Demetri once again, this time playing as the 113th Infantry Division. And yeah, this is uh, pretty much a prequel to the 44 Red Storm, set in place in 41. It's a really cool mod, I mean, it's nice to see early war being simulated in Steel Division here. And there's a bunch of, you know, small changes as per usual, like if the Red Storm or like the Balance mod or, if, you know, just... Lots of gameplay changes. For example, here, for the Soviets, um, they don't get veterancy from commanders. They only get veterancy from killing. Germans are still standard. Well, it's one of those things like, eh, Germans are like, eh, we killed people before. They're Polish, they were unarmed, you know, a lot of things like that, but, you know. Um, BA-10 early on here, getting pinged off over here by that, by that Pack 38 Kind of cool thing for me is we get to see, like, super early Stug 3s. So this is the short-barreled kind of assault guns. These are before they've perfected the, we don't want tanks, we just want weaponry on the line. Which is yes. kind of cool. And these are all, like, a yeah, Stug 3 is basically a good medium tank in this mod. Yeah. I mean, those BA-10s yeah. are, like, actually somewhat lethal because all this early raw stuff is now having to fight against Panthers or T-3045s. Yeah, exactly. I mean, from the, over here on the Soviet side, we could see, what is it, a T-38 coming on in? Oh, yeah. Which is super cool. And as far as I know, I think we can touch everything on here. It's not going to break if we touch it. Yeah, re um, this replay should not be uh, bomb-proof. Or... It is bomb-proof. I, I bomb-proofed it earlier. I was to say, bombing-proof. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be kind of a rough thing. Then. <laughs> <But> <laughs> we got 221s, we got 222s, and these T-26 1933s. I love, by the way, is a poorly trained mod on this. So, minus 30% accuracy, minus 30% rate of fire, stress resilience, it's actually pretty good. But, dispersion is pretty shit. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are, um... Because a lot of the early war Soviet tankers, especially also of the air crews, were not very well trained. That's one of the problems with, you know, the early war T-34s and KV-1s. It's just, it's... You know, basically the Randa Weapon super tank of this time period, but the people didn't know how to use it efficiently because they barely got any training time on the bloody equipment. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Now, looking over here at what we should be expecting from both sides, I mean, don't expect to see a lot of, like, naval verfers and things like that. I mean, this is not that kind of mod. Um, naval verfers really weren't a thing, actually, I think it's 42 or 43, were they? Um, yeah. Wait, no, I mean, please. Oh, just looking at that um, 76 mil, it's a bloody 11-man squad to operate a single infantry gun. I just imagine they just have, like, a line of dudes, like, you know, moving the shells around, like, you know, pale buckets. Oh, yeah, it's like a bucket brigade of just... Yeah. yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I didn't even notice that, but you're absolutely correct. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it's it's uh, there's going to be so much janky stuff. I mean, look, we've got Shuchin's here with uh, inbuilt sniper rifle and the, essentially a grenadier squad, which is pretty damn deadly. I have to... Oh, the sniper only has 500 meter range. It's more like ESC-44 sniper. Mm -hmm. I was talking in the meantime. I mean, the funny thing is we're not going to see crazy amounts of modifiers all over the place, but we do have a couple ones here, like Veteran Schutzen, for example, with the Kriegs Veteran kind of buff. Um, BA-10 might actually be pretty good here, but similarly, the Panzer Abwehrgruppe would also be pretty good. Like, yeah. Holy God, the, 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 yeah. The playing field in this is so even in so many different weird ways, which, yeah, it pretends to be a lot of cool stuff here. It's rare seeing anti-tank rifles for 30 points, and having three of them is actually, like, that's a pretty scary squad. We're going to see the BA-10 move up, and Ian's going to get peckered. Look at him go. Um, I just saw him, I didn't even see him go. I was too busy looking at the fact that there was a T-38 coming on in here. So this is just the DT um, command tank overall, which is kind of a shame. Oh. I really wish to see it with all the little rinky-dink. 
guns here. Uh, but it's amphibious, which is kind of cute. Yeah, it's a Soviet pancake tank. What do you mean, latka tank? Or is that too Polish? That might be a little bit too Polish. There's a uh, bit of animosity between him and the Russians. I... Who'd have thought? I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the Schutzen over here, this... That, yeah, wow, that, that sniper rifle gives us such an unparalleled ability just to be deadly. More than just from a suppression standpoint. That's so cool. Yeah, we were seeing like he's large German pioneer scrotch, uh try to push on through. Even the strokies aren't like, they're actually very well equipped. They got eight bloody SVTs. Like, that's, that's, that's damn good. Well, and the PPD over here, this is not the, pa the Papa Shah that we'll see in a little bit later in the war. But it's nothing to sneer at the shake a fist at either. It's pretty dang good. Yeah, they're pretty damn similar. Um, but I'm curious, why bring in a command tank if your troops can't get anything unless they get a body count? I think they still get the radio uh, bonus. That that's true. That's it helps true. out. But yeah, and I think it's still like the passive buffs they give. Oh no! They, oh no! This isn't the commander. Commander. This no. is just the leader one. Yep. So, oh, no, okay. They also the optics. Got it. They get an optics bonus. I just share to shout orders and for everyone to ignore them. I mean, that's what any self respecting enlisted man does. So, that. I completely understand that. Especially one from what was left of Soviet High Command in 1941. They did not have the best operators at that point. I also want to acknowledge the fact there's a 50 mil mortar that's been engaging and just literally pushed the entire Pioneer squad into, into stress up and down. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit of friendly fire. Well, not so friendly fire. Yeah. Yeah, anybody says that friendly fire is a thing doesn't has never been in friendly fire. So... Yeah. Um, M37 engaged with some troops, light troops to the northern side. Um, but in IG-18, this is before they kind of get to that super... I would say low-key kind of frontline assault vehicle, no, assault gun roll. There's a surprising amount of first range, but also just that nice arc of fire that should be able to engage the T-26 pretty well. Yeah, it should help out quite a bit. Anyway, this is also, you know, like, like with uh, Red Storm, you can actually use that as an artillery gun, which is quite nice in this case. Not very accurate at long range, but it's Still better than nothing. True. True, and as of right now, the plunging fire, yeah, it's not going to do a whole lot to the T-26. That's more when we have the face-to-face, -face, you can lock softballs at them. Um, wait, who's, who's engaging that tank other than the gun? Oh, I think just, I think just incidental fire. Um, oh, yeah. We'll go the stroke use, just so, you know, the T-26 Which is firing back. Really speaks to the volumes of, uh, how well that thing works on if small arms fire from the stroke he is stressing it out. True, true, but at the same time T26 doesn't really know to being well armored, which just Yeah. It, it existed. That was the important part. <laughs> it was the bare minimum. Yeah, yeah. As as in any good Soviet weapon system, mm -hmm. it existed to exist. Um please. Oh you seem like a pretty good pussy in the uh the center from Sir Genshay, the two two ones, man's in the break on three, but we're seeing the T thirty eight. Uh n neither of them can shoot at each other, so they're just gonna I don't know, drive by, have a little rave. Talk about their know. day. I think the T twenty T thirty eight could technically kill it. Uh, oh. T twenty six can though. Yeah. The gun jammed, so somehow he was able to shoot that machine gun and not kill the vehicle, but killed the machine gun. Impressive. It's, that's like a... That's a, a type of stuff you get in War Thunder, honestly. Yes, it is. Like the first shot, you always just shoot the gun. Oh, it's absolutely. It's magnetic somehow. Absolutely. Um, the T26 is going to clean the T30, the T21s here. Um, there's a pack to the north that's actually engaging another T26, and like you said, fired a shot, first one jammed the gun, second one jammed the tank, so I mean, not too shabby. And it's also funny, you know, this pack 38 might as well be a pack 40, which is how deadly it is. But see again, yeah. you know, what we'll find out is bloody T26 tanks. 
Well, and that's what it is, isn't it? I mean, if you're looking at the deck, they don't get anything heavier than a T26 the entire way through. Oh. No. Which, again, is, is quite funny and yet just depressing. I um, mean, those Stugs and B and C fight. I mean, the Stugs in general prove to be quite difficult to deal with once they actually come out. But to get there is the biggest issue. Because right now you're going to see that Sergensi, he doesn't have the econ advantage. Well, I guess face C, he kind of does. But it's one of those things that he doesn't feel like he has an econ advantage even there. He's still got to stumble through wave upon wave upon wave of screaming Soviets before you get to really kind of worry about you know, get anything really solid. Yeah, and we're all seeing that screaming rave of Soviets actually puts extremely effectively in the center. This mm -hmm. is a whole lot of relic of st strokies and also we got the strokey pu out also have an inbuilt sniper rifle within their squad so, so decent my, amount of marksmen i think the reason you don't see too many strokey pu's those because they smell bad yeah, they um, do yeah that's why everyone stays away from them yeah exactly and i think that that sniper rifle kind of helps with that too it's like guys don't be any closer than what it takes for us to shoot you with this yep. call it nurgle but for the soviets <laughs> Uh, uh, but Panzer Abwehr Group, uh, again, engaging Stroke squads, and in, in the vanilla, this would of course be a giant hassle, but here it probably kind of works. Yeah, one lone shooting, puts it on through. Definitely just, I think he's just trying to buy time for the 50 mil mortar to maybe come online, but it's just, you know, Dimitri has a very good amount of momentum here in the B phase. If he was to, you know, keep on pushing, you know, try to get that one village in the forest, that's a very good defensible location. Actually, I got a note down south, there was this, this long conga line of Russian oh. infantry, which, with a, with a, 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 a Zvedka over here engaging some shooting out in the open, they already killed a Strumpire squad. And like you said, he had one star, he killed the Strumpire squad, he's got two stars. Now, will he get more than that? Probably not, especially if these Brandenburger DTs are going to be backing it up. An MG34 over here to kind Holy of go and crap. cause a base of fire. So, yeah, you're not going to go anywhere with this. That Brandenburg squad is is lit. They get two Maltins, PPDs. Like, it's pretty much just a uh, Russian equipment, which I guess is to simulate them um, going behind enemy lines, dressed up as Russians, and doing a bunch of stuff which wasn't technically war crimes. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Russians didn't ask who won the World Series in 1928. So, um, yeah, then have like an inbuilt protection against, I suppose, in the BA-20 is there for about two seconds. And it gets blown to shreds. MG-34 just absolutely lights up these superiors. So that, that SU-88 that came in, M-88 rather, um, was okay. It just it got some nice bombs off, but just didn't get any kind of killiness. No. Oh. But Soviets will retain the air power advantage for the time being, as we do have his I-15s flying about. Which is, yeah, it's also going to be funny seeing the all, you know, all this early war aircraft actually perform quite effectively. I mean, that I-15 only has a single machine gun, and it's just a machine gun, not a 50 cal, just, just a machine gun. True, true. But at the same time, it's kind of weird for me. I, I, you know. I'm not, I'm not a wing wiper. I don't know the air quite as well as maybe I could. Yikes, T-26 goes down just from just 50 mil mortars. You've just incendiary it to shreds. Damn. And absolutely I... pounded you. Well, and, and one of them's got no more shells, so he's going to donate his life to the cause, apparently. Just running up so that way he can waste some more rounds for the strokey squads. So that was a choice. Um, yikes. You know, Strokies are continuing the good fight. Yeah, the Pioneers being forced to fall back. We're seeing Gensei bring in a whole heap of troops to try and defend, you know, this northern village area. And uh, Dimitri's kind of slowing down a bit here. He had a pretty good opportunity to get into the village, but now with all these Shuchin uh, entrenched and into here, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of support guns to back him up either. That's going to be tough to break in now. Weird that the Soviet division over here is not packing more artillery. I mean, even at this early stage, it's one of the things that the division of status pretty much has a ton of not necessarily 
tube artillery, but actually just raw barrels. They had a pretty good quality of that. Yeah. I was surprised not to see Dimitri kind of lean into that there. Um, I do want to make a quick call out, though. Look at the southern side, at the road specifically, by one that's between the two southernmost flags. There's this hefty chunk of material that I think is just waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh. Maybe one teeny tiny breakout, and that's going to go screaming towards the gap. I got the Soviet arm and platoon in reserve. Maybe he's going to do another SU-2 bombing run and try to just bomb the hell out of that forest. I mean, it could it could work well, but that one Pack 38 is in a fantastic spot. And, of course, you know, that being a Pack 38 and 41 is absolutely deadly. One thing I'm actually kind of surprised by is the fact that we haven't seen any strokes get it brought in just yet. Same! I'm, I really want to see some stooks, you know, live out the stug life. Because, again, to just repeat this, they will be good enough. So it's it's not like it's going to be something that they are not able to, to hack it with what's over here for all the Soviet equipment. So I'm watching it as one shoots and squats on the northern side takes this plinked to death by just tons and tons of just sniper rounds. Um... Yikes. And seeing the the entire experience in the other direction from the spot wagon, 231 here. Um, but yeah, a lot of equipment, it's not like it's going to be able to easily take them out. And, and the Stug 3, not really known. I think about maybe 50 mil of armor, 60 mil of armor. It wasn't it wasn't a lot. But no, that it's pretty might low. As well be. Yeah. I, th I do like how two free runs is shooting one shot at a time. It's been very conservative with its auto cannon. Like, it's not like going burr, 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 burr. It's just going burr, burr, burr. I think that was the point. I think it was looking for more of, like, trying to establish a beep. You know, like a beep mm -hmm. or something like that. They don't want to go just, like, let off everything immediately. It's sending a Morse code message to the enemy to surrender. Yes, just like this this Penta Apfair group uh, is able to send a nice little message over here towards the T-26. <laughs> First shot, incendiary. Second shot, transmission destroyed. Third shot... I want to, again, point out the fact there are three guys with anti-tank rifles here. Can't blow up that one tank. It's probably going to come down to the Pack 38. Even the Pack 38 can't hit him. Jesus Christ. With a dead transmission, too. Like, I, I don't know, man. Have you ever had it been in a car with no transmission? There we go. With no transmission. That thing is going nowhere fast. Yeah, Gensai's managed to do a pretty good job of stabilizing the north here. I mean, that one Pack 38 will pretty much shut down... Any push that has a hefty amount of high explosive shells as well. And as we're seeing, that T26 in the back is also not going anywhere. But it's, you know, still pretty slow, 11-13. It can really still be anyone's game. I think it'll probably just come down to... Oh, either the far central position actually being pushed. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. In the south as well, there's a 120mm mortar that has just obliterated the German lines for the time being. And as I suspected, they're they're racing for the gap there. They want to open up out into the field, which I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that one per se. I feel like if you have the road, use the road. Um, because I'm gonna find out what the problem is with using a road when there's a pack thirty eight that's still in operation. Yeah, when the Crescent is really artillery be able to redirect its fire fast enough? Well, the tanks are definitely fast enough. Jesus Christ, that's that's a very suppressed Pack 38. Yeah, and that, that is the one downside. Because the Pack 38 didn't exactly have the, the, the most secure, let's say, of weapon shields there. And no, still no shoot. Still no stuck. Shoot. And this is where it's going to get a little bit dicey here for Gensei, because Dimitri has some very good CQC troops. They're the same thing the Brandenburgs also yeah. have satchel charges, but the Soviets definitely outnumber in this case. I'd actually argue that the these are not the later stage CQC that you're thinking of. Like well, the Soviets? Just, yeah. Well, it's they have not. the satchels. I mean, they don't have, um, you know, the SVT spam like the Sapiris in 44, but they're so decent. Okay, I mean, it's just, it's, it's to me, it's more of like, ah, cool, we're not talking about the Tango de Saniki, which are just kind of riding to war on the back of just all the bullets they've showered out of their you know, there's Papa Shah's. Um, like, yeah, I mean... If you stick a bayonet on them, also, and, you know, it's a very... It's a very, very CQC weapon, but you can get your 
point across quite well. Yes, if I put a rubber bayonet not in anything, it might point across hmm. very well. Um, but we can see right here, shoots and up close and personal. These guys somehow can only see the superior squad that's running around the other direction. But they're going to engage as BA-20, which is getting forced back by grenades. I always forget that that's the case here. Yeah, it's a little bit ballsy of the BA-20. Definitely doing a bit of uh, reconnaissance by fire in a very, well, haphazard manner. But so again, say he's, you know, barely holding on to his head to the forest with the few infantry he has. Here we are seeing reinforcements from Dimitri. This can really make or break it. If Dimitri can break through into his forest area, you know, spread out all his superior troops, he can make it quite, you know, quite a bit of health against Shade to take that back. True. But if these other guys that are being brought in right now can get there in time. I mean, 54 mortar, I'm gonna set up behind this, uh, 88 that's firing air quotes flak bullets um i don't know i i think i think there's an opportunity here oh geez those shoots are gonna get obliterated though <laughs> oh, hands reds of smoke oh my god that's yeah it wasn't a fire fire i was an execution the nkvd officers rear that was that was that scene from fury when they're cleaning up that german defensive line yes yeah yeah we're gonna see the tanks engage at long range down the road. You know, the extremely long range of, you know, 600 meters or so. Well, the 231 and the 232. I mean, the 231 by itself now, but the 231 killing a tank commander. This is not the time to go and be super stingy with your rounds. But um, I think we'll probably get another kill here. No, jeez. So the tank commander's dead. No, no, wait. He's 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 knocked out. Curious, but um, there we go. And there we go, that's, you know, pretty much a good opener for Dimitri to rush in his infantry and get into his southern point. As we're seeing, it's a 16-8. If we look back up north, Dimitri's made pretty good progress in the central area. He's, of course, lost a lot of momentum far north. Again, so he's kind of pushing a lot of it, yeah, but, of course, the problem pushing, you know, really north in sector is there's not a whole lot to capture. I'd like to tell you, by the way, we have a stroke on the field. Oh, finally. And, and it's and it's a Fuhrer von Hammerstein, so I don't know where Herr Rogers is, but we do have some sounds of beautiful music we'll be playing here soon enough. Yeah, he really does need that stug to you know, kill that T twenty six column. I mean at long range that stug, you know, might as well be a, a tiger tank against those T twenty sixes. He has a pretty good shot. Yeah. Yeah, and the kind of cool thing too is they actually get the smoke laying on this, which is not something you tended to see very often, but it's a really, really oh. nifty thing. Can come very useful, you know, like smoking out an enemy anti-tank gun, which is shooting you, for example. Um, but, all order, because now there is a single half-track, a single 88, and a single Stug to hold back the tide of Soviet Russia. And indeed, if I'm the Soviets at this point, I'm inclining, I would take some of my T-26s and run northwest. That's right, you really just want to try and spread out in that forest as much as possible, because it's just, you're, you're essentially playing Nidor on a haystack game, so, oh, uh, HS-126 gonna be doing some recon. We haven't really seen much anti-air here from the Soviets, so you can just fly around really nilly and spot all these buggers. I'm going to see that this should be, I think, is going to get plinked out, unfortunately. Damaged optics, they had a, a knocked-out commander. He is going to go and kill the material in one tank, but there's just there's too many fire sources, I would argue, so I think this is going to be negative at the end. And that Flak 88 is slowly making his way up, but he... Yeah, he only can shoot uh, anti-aircraft units, I believe, because he only has the uh, bullets. Hey, the BF-109, though. Oh, wow. 100 kilometers of bombs takes out a T-26 and <laughs> Titanic. Uh, oh, but with that kind of holding on in the meantime, I'm kind of, actually kind of surprised that we haven't seen more Germans being thrust here in the center, too. Yeah, it's sort of a pretty good a, position. Yeah, I mean, and, they, and they've held the northern town. So, Rally, you've got this opportunity here where clearly there's not been a lot of fighting. There's been a ton of fighting down to the south, and you know how much is there now. 
You might as well be effective. Um, Stuart goes down. AD is going to go down soon enough, as does the half track, I imagine. And I think this is what happens when you, when you are too stingy with some of your fight, fighting vehicles here. Yeah, and also just not having enough infantry to, you know, support. Because now the Soviet infantry are in that forest. They are in a very good defensive position. They pretty much, are, you know, own all the flags in that forest. And as you've seen, that 17-7, that's going to be very tough to push back. Oh, extremely tough to push back. Um, especially when, one by one, this, yeah, this... From, I would argue, from this Schutzen squad, who is only barely holding it together by the smallest scrap, from their south, it is a very, very hard place to be, if you're German. Yeah, it's a red tide. Yeah, we do have, well, Gente does have opportunities to capture some flags in the center. There's two which he could potentially capture with a little bit of infantry play. And if you look up north, it seems like he is trying to redirect his push to get some of those flags, because by god, he really needs him at this point. So, you know, seven minutes bleed, and he's pretty much out. Yes, indeed. Well, I mean, we are seeing a couple of T-38 actually gets forced into a surrender, so um, Officer is clearly setting a good example for the rest of their men. Uh, Smokey Squad getting pinned down. There's one this, this again, this Panzer Abwehr Gruppe, which I want to check the range in. That's 400 meters range. Is he out of range there? If he's out of range, he's only barely out of range in that T-26. Yeah, that's kind of a shame, because he really needs to blow it up, because that can stop this entire push. Yes, it absolutely can. I mean, 15-9 in the meantime, I think all you're going to see here in the south is how much can I stem the bleeding, and then moving out anywhere else other than that. But um, when you have superiors, you have Poli um, Polkovoi superiors, and these motorized superiors moving around. Yes, they're only running most of the Gants. Yes, they have a PPD and a TNT there. But there's only one squad of LMG troops, and they, they just they don't have enough firepower for that. Yeah. There's really too much to dig out. At this point, we're seeing another Snug being brought in. And there's only one operational T-26 in this case. But still, it's just... He eventually has to get all the infantry. And he's... He's smoking the forest. I... I don't... agree with that, honestly. No, no, I, I totally agree with that. Think about this. Go ahead. Bring in your armored fighting vehicles. Yes, you can even go and kill my tanks, as you see here. But the infantry right now is trying to sweep around as he knows there's some kind of infantry here from Gensu. So if he can bring his troops around, hit it from a couple different um, angles, and indeed, as we can see here, it doesn't matter the fact that the tanks don't specifically have anti-tank against them, they can still take it out. There's still like grenades that we see. Yeah. So, so, especially with these Shugs, they don't have really a committed anti-infantry fire you know, system either. Now close range machine gun. We've seen smoke being dropped behind the stug. This is like a perfect ambush being set up here. It's very cinematic actually. Oh, absolutely. It's beautiful. And the BA tens were being brought on in here too, so you can't even see the BA tens as they come forward. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, this is this is very safe and private Ryan, if there was you know safe and profit, you know, little Civic or something. It's going in, the BA-10 comes in the hot. I guess the smoke actually also benefits the stug because he can just reverse into it and escape the ambush. The Pioneer infantry, not so much. But see, and that's kind of the idea here, is that you're really only nervous about the infantry. You don't really care about the tank. There's not enough of it. It doesn't yeah. matter. You can just force the tank out of any good engagement. And look to see where these new infantry squads are being brought on in right into the teeth of the Soviet advance. So, yeah, they'll get out, but the MG-34 isn't going to matter as much when you have all of your rifle troops in that spot so close. Oh, and the superiors just need to get in close, uh, chuck their grenades, NKVDs are sort of coming in pretty clutch as well, and bring in the heavy firepower of the DTMG. But I think... Gente should just have enough firepower to clear out the Samba, so it's going to be a pretty pyrrhic victory. True. Two more T-26s are being brought on in, though. A Maxim hoofing it over here. And indeed, we're going to see more superiors, and even this M37 is going to try to rotate northwest. Um, 
I didn't really appreciate the fact that the NKVD are not slouches in this. Oh. Like, they actually have really, really pretty good fire. The DT, they have a couple of, you know, pop, uh, PPDs over here. Radius destroyed, okay, that, that's a big loss. Air quotes. Um, but yeah. And crew killed, so that Stoga is not completely worthless. I guess they have a pretty good motivation to fight pretty well, considering what would happen to them if they get captured. True. True. B A ten picked up another star in the meantime. I'm taking a look back to the northern side because we had seen a moment of just like pure bloody minded just German aggression. And I think we're going to see the end of that over here. Yeah. We've seen these uh Felder sat trooping bloody MG thirteens of everything that's uh I wanna say they're like Earth Sat trooping, but they're not, they're just poorly equipped. They at least have I mean, the heart to invade the Soviet Union. They're the field air such trooper, so I mean, yeah. That's essentially what they are. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, no, that's just Feld. Feld air such trooper. Um, oh, yeah, it literally does say air such trooper in the name. <laughs> like, it, it, got, it got jumbled in with all, like, the German. And you're like, I know German's a weird language. You put about 15 different words together and it means something completely different. Which has always been, I don't know, it's been oddly comforting for that as a language goes. Like, if I can put all these words together... Like, I don't know. It, it's interesting. Anyway, not important. We'll leave linguistics for a different video. For right now, let's focus on what's going on here. Um, but yeah, completely shut down. We have one failed air such troop into the northern side. We have a couple of Kubelwagens with MGs on them. There's a piece of me that almost feels safe in taking this to a times two. Yeah, I think we can do that at 31.50. Sounds good. But here we go, folks. I mean, if we're looking at this right about now, 14-10, 15-9, Genzi, I think, just did not use his armored assets particularly well. Yeah. So, yeah, please. No, it's just... That southern post was just so bloody effective. A bit slow from Dimitri's angle, but it got the job done. I think Genzi probably could have played better just trying to push in the central town. Especially as we see now of our god of his, and it's not really that well defended. Uh, one thing I do appreciate from Gensi, though, is that he's using recon troops, or recon airplanes to draw fire overall. BF-109 over here has been in a couple of times, made a couple of very nice kills. And we can see here is 1311, and the Schutzen in the center taking some territory, but the question is, is it too late? Because it feels like it's too late. It's definitely too late. As you see now, getting, well, some weird frontline funk is happening there. Yeah, it's 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 lava lamping right now. That's for sure. <laughs> and I think we're gonna see it kind of closed off over here. Um, there's that 120 mil. That's just gonna be engaging this German position to the west. This shoots over here getting flanked by an M37 and two Maxims. Yeah, this is yeah, this very buggered. And one by one, these Grenadier squads, these shoots in the squads, Grenadier squads, whatever you want to call them, they're getting picked off. So I mean cool thing about Ostfront over here is it's not your standard veterans in the veterancy system. It's it's very kind of company of heroes-ish over here, I would argue, from the Soviet's perspective. Yeah, it's quite fun to have two different veterancy systems for both factions, that it really does change up how you play the game. And also, as you see, just the less lethality on the weapon systems definitely does make combat a little bit slower. So you actually have a bit more time to react. And I also think it'd make the maps a bit more interesting because you don't have as many, you know, long range, two kilometer weapon systems. So it's a little bit safer, so to speak, to push across an open field. You know, I, I absolutely agree on that one. Um, one of the funny things I think about this is I think that there's such a dominant strategy already being made for so many different maps that these mods definitely revitalize a lot of that. Yes. I guess completely changes, as you can see, even though it's the same game with roughly the same, you know, baseline mechanics, just completely changing the time frame to three years before, you know, the road, road it's kind of crazy how different the, uh, you know, the weapon systems change in three years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have to know, taking a quick look over here at kills, there's one T26 did very well for himself, a superior squad did very well for himself, a second T26 did very well for himself. Kind of, again, interesting to see that after squads get picked off, how much better these other T26s and infantry squads can get. Yeah, and then looking at losses, 
Yep. Pack 38, doing mm -hmm. decent. Failed to the trooper, knock out T38. But apart from that, nothing all that crazy. No. No. But like we said on Tuesday, guys, we would love to have more people check out these mods and give us some tasty, tasty replays just because they're so different. I would argue they're really quite unique in what they're trying to do. Um, but yeah, please check these out. Um, the one over here on Tuesday was was Gensi's mod over here for rebalancing. This one over here, I forget who this is by. Help me out. Uh, Mr. Crisp. Ah, uh, Mr. Crisp. We've seen his work before. So you, if Mr. Crisp did work on it, you know it's going to be solid. So do check those out, okay? Um, any final thoughts for today, though, sir? No. Well, folks, in that case, then, we're going to go and uh, say goodbye for now. Until next week, I'm Conal Work. I'm Rangroo. Take it easy.